So, so far we've um, studied households uh, in the model of Slack, uh, whether it's with representative agent or heterogeneous agent, um, and we've focused on uh, the decision of households, uh, the consumption decision, saving decision, um, or if you want the spending and saving decision of the household. Now, in the matching literature, it's typically more common to focus on uh, vacancies. Uh, say, if you think about the labor market, you think about how many vacancies a firm will open, or if you have an atomistic firm, so a firm with one worker, whether the firm opens the vacancy or not. Um, so here, in our macro model, this would be like thinking about visits. Um, and indeed, in the model, the main decision that the household uh, makes is how many visits to shop uh, they are going to uh, to do. That's a crucial decision because um, once you've decided the number of visits through the matching process, this is going to decide how many uh, services you're actually going to purchase, um, how much you're going to spend, whatever is not spent is going to be saved. So indeed, the key active decision that they are going to make is how many visits they want to do. Um, and now, so far, we focus mostly on spending and consumption. That's because um, I wanted to have a model that's as close as possible to standard macro model in which you focus on consumption de saving decision of households. Um, but nevertheless, it's exactly equivalent to reformulate the model uh, by taking visits as the key decision of the households, which would be more in the standard matching tradition, and then rederiving all the results. Like these two approaches are exactly equivalent. Why? Because once you have decided the number of visits, then you also decide your spending because we know that each visit is going to be successful with some probability um, Q of X, uh, which depends on tightness. So these two things are exactly isomorphic because once you decide visits, effectively, since we assume that there is no randomness at the household level, you're also going to decide how much you spend and everything else. But nevertheless, I still want to show you how you can recast the model by focusing on visits, and it may be helpful to uh, get a better understanding of what's going on and also um, to draw parallel with, uh, with, stand, with typical matching models. Um, so we can do that. And actually, it's, it's pretty simple um, to recast the model and in particular the household problem uh, in terms of uh, visits. So let's try to do that um, just to you know, get a better understanding of how you know basically of the model solution and how the model behaves. And here, what I can do is um, keep our um, you know, heterogeneous agent um, setup, you know, that's totally fine. There's nothing that's, you know, I think maybe it would uh, help understand what's going on. So we're going to recast the model to focus on visits uh, to shops. Uh, so the key thing is that now uh, household I chooses the number of visits behind to maximize utility subject to budget constraint. Taking as given, of course, uh, tightness X and the price P. And of course, you know, the key thing is that the, if you take tightness as given, you know, you take the price as given, you know, as a household, you're a small household, you have no influence over that. But of course, this tightness that you take as given, this price that you test as given, and that's part of the, um, the solution concept that they have to be, of course, the price will have to be the correct price. Um, and the tightness will also have to be the correct tightness that's actually of course, you know, that's going to be realized once all households um, have taken their decision. So these, of course, are the, you know, are the, are the correct ones. Um, and so if we, um, so how does the how 
what are the household's problem uh, look like? Well, it's going to be pretty easy. So a couple of relationships to know. So you know that the household's <coughs> uh, their behavior depends on consumption. And so here, because we want to really focus on visits, we have to rewrite consumption as a function of visits. So consumption, you know that it's going to be um, how much is, so consumption, so it's what we call C, is Y, how much is um, purchase minus rho V, number of visits V, rho, uh, number of services devoted to matching, per visit, okay, um, but, why the number of services that's bought, that's deter directly determined by the number of visits. So this is going to be Qx minus rho times v. So you can see, the, and why is that? Because here, uh, y is just Qx times v. Because uh, we know that each visit is uh, successful with probability Qx. So basically, you can see that once you have tightness, consumption, and number of visits, um, they are linearly uh, related. Um, and of course, um, the, yes, so they are linearly related and the, the scalar, the coefficient that relates the two is Qx minus rho, so it depends on um, tightness. What about spending, which at the end of the day is also output. So oh, here I should have said Ci, Yi, Vi, Qi, Qx minus rho, and Qx minus rho is some variable that's the same for everybody. Um, spending by the household yi, that's just qx times vi, so that's very easy. <coughs> uh, right, and so uh, once we have this, we can therefore rewrite the household problem as maximizing over the number of visit vi of consumption. Um, And so consumption, we know that it's key or one plus key. Uh, C, epsilon minus one over epsilon, but C, which is consumption, is determined by uh, visit VI. So that's QX minus rho VI plus one over one plus key. That's the utility from wells times mi over p epsilon minus one over epsilon, where mi is your holding of wealth. And of course, this is subject to budget constraint, which would determine mi. So the budget constraint says that mi, once we divide uh, mi plus, so that's how much you hold in wealth, plus p, that's the price of services, qx, vi, that's how many services you purchase, has to be equal to mu i, your initial endowment of wealth, plus p, fx, ki, that's your income. Okay, and so from this, we can see that therefore the household's problem can just be written as max over vi. You can, you will see that it's actually a, mac, a concave maximization problem and you can, you have a linear constraint, but you can plug it in to substitute uh, real wealth out. Uh, and so that simplifies things greatly. So you have key, one plus key. Qx minus rho, vi, epsilon minus one over epsilon, plus one over one plus key. Oops, sorry, here I'm gonna get rid of that. And here we have mi over p, so that's just going to be qx minus qx vi plus mu i over p plus fx ki. Okay, so here you can see this is uh, this is just a concave uh, maximization problem. That's because the first function here is concave. Uh, here you have something that's um, linear uh, function that's linear. Uh, and um, you put it through a concave operator, and so you'll get also something that's um, concave here. Um, and then you 
have the sum of two concave functions that give you something that's concave. Um, so you can just use, uh, you know, so we know that here you could then take a first order condition with respect to the number of visits. Um, and the first order condition would give you directly um, not only a local but a global uh, maximum here since our function is concave and so the uh, uh, the first order condition here is just simply so we can just uh, do it quickly, but then we'll see that actually it's going to become almost essentially the same as what we had when we were looking at the problem, uh, but focusing on, on uh, spending yi. So we have k over 1 plus k, epsilon minus 1 over epsilon. And we have qx minus rho. Uh, epsilon minus 1 over epsilon, and then we have vi here minus 1 over epsilon. Here we'll have a minus that will come out, 1 over 1 plus key, here we'll have a qx, and then we'll have epsilon minus 1 over epsilon, and then, you know, inside we'll have this whole term here, minus 1 over epsilon, um, you can put this whole term in here. And that has to be equal to zero. Um, <coughs> and so what we can do is we can just uh, move this thing. So equal to zero, we can get rid of that. We can instead say that these two things have to be equal. This you can get rid of one over one plus key. You can get rid of this thing. Um, and then um, what you can do is then you can multiply everything by minus epsilon. Uh, and once you multiply everything by minus epsilon, you also get rid of this thing. You get rid of this thing. Uh, here you have a minus epsilon. Here you have a minus epsilon. And here you get rid of this epsilon. And you put a minus and a plus here. And so then once you reshuffle things around, you get that vi is going to be, so I put this on the other side, I have a key epsilon. Here I have a qx epsilon. Then I have a qx minus rho epsilon minus 1. Uh, right, and then here I have f of x ki plus mu i over p minus qx uh, v i. And then, you know, as usual, what you have to do here is that you have to uh, bring this term here on the other side, so that you collect all your vi's. And so once you do that, uh, so maybe it's also convenient to bring this guy here too. Uh, so once you do that, what you get, you get that uh, qx epsilon Oh, I guess, yes. Um, oh, I guess not. So we don't really need to bring this here. But we'll just get VI. So we get 1 minus. And so this whole thing here is going to be uh, key epsilon. Qx, uh, Qx 1 minus epsilon, Qx minus rho, epsilon minus 1, times vi is equal to this whole thing here, key epsilon, Q 
write epsilon. Here it's minus one, so minus one, and then here just the uh, uh, income and wealth of the household, which is fx initial fx ki plus mu i over p. Okay, and so then at the end <laughs> we get vi is uh, basically the amount of services that the households want to. Uh, purchase, and we'll see here, of course, that you know number of visits that household want to do, and you see, of course, here it depend on x, depend on p, and it's going to be uh, therefore uh, once you know, and then you have this like, complicated expression here, key epsilon, two x minus rho epsilon minus one, two x minus epsilon divided by one also have a minus here, so this was a plus in fact, divided by one plus key epsilon qx minus rho epsilon minus one qx <coughs> one minus epsilon and then f of x ki income plus mu i over p and the amount of real wealth. So this is what would come out, you know, so you can do exactly the same analysis as before and get the visits that maximize the output. But then what you notice is, in fact, uh, here you notice, you know, once you multiply everything by Qx on both sides, you get Qx vi of xp is equal to this big term here. I'm sorry. So it's key epsilon Qx minus rho epsilon minus one, qx, one minus epsilon divided by one plus, and here we find exactly the same term, q epsilon, qx minus rho, epsilon minus one, qx, one minus epsilon, fxki plus mu i over p. Um, but here, what you notice is that this is just, uh, this is just yi, of XP, so you know the amount of output that households want to purchase. This is just uh, what we had defined as sigma X, the marginal propensity to spend, and this is and this is just your initial wealth plus your income. And so here we find exactly the same uh, result as, as before, that how much the household spend is a fraction uh, of initial wealth and income. So, you know, whether you look at the problem looking at visits or output is exactly the same, uh, is exactly the same. Nevertheless, you know, it's, it's in a sense maybe good to see how you can do it. And then, you know, so then that gives you uh, the number of visits and then, you know, you could compute an aggregate. Number of visits in the same way that you have an aggregate demand and that would just be, uh, you would just call this V of X P and it's going to be the sum over all I's of the I's of X P. Um, and which, you know, is very easy to, to sum because uh, to choose a structure of the solution and this, you know, once you do that, you refine the sigma x, which we have here, which is the same for all households, and then you will just get the sum inside here and you will sum the ki's and you will sum the ui's here. And so you will get something like sigma x, fx, times k plus mu over p, so exactly the same. Uh, So you will get that Q X V of X P sigma X times this, uh, and this is basically this is the same as the AD curve that we had earlier. Uh, we have individual visit, aggregate visit, aggregate output. And, you know, you know how to back out consumption. We said earlier. Uh, you can get, you know, consumption and output. Consumption visits are related as follow. Spending visits are related as follow. Uh, of course, 
the spending MI. This is just this, so this is just MI. So you can also get it once you have VI, UI, KI, and um, so then you know you can just roll out the entire uh, model exactly like um, we saw before. But so there's really it's exactly isomorphic to think in terms of visits or to think in terms of um, just directly spending, you know. And if we want to make a, a better parallel with micro model, I think it makes sense to, sti to stick uh, to not visits, but really um, spending, which is at the end what matters because it, it, it's going to enter directly the budget constraint and the utility function.